So what we have here is the UK website uh, for the COVID-19 symptom tracker. Uh, this is the app that is being translated into Swedish and will be made available in Sweden in the next couple of weeks. So Sweden at the moment doesn't have uh, good data on the national spread of coronavirus. They, uh, the public health agency at the moment is working very much with information from the hospitals, um, which is useful, but there's a delay. So the app uh, is designed to allow people to input data every day. Uh, it takes about a minute just to record some information about any symptoms they might be having, for example, a fever or a sore throat or a cough. So this is a map of the UK that's been developed using the data from the COVID symptom tracker. Now, what we'd like to do, of course, is to use those types of data for Sweden. And what we'll then be able to do is to indicate where uh, COVID-19 is starting to spread in Sweden, um, giving the hospitals uh, an early warning of the likely increase in admissions for COVID-19. So we have a large team at Lund University of epidemiologists, lawyers, ethicists working very, very hard with the company in Zoe and scientists at Uppsala University to push this through as quickly as we can. The application is undergoing ethical review at the moment, and we hope that within a week we'll have permission to release it, which means that if we all goes to schedule, we'll have this out at the back end of week 16 for people in Sweden to start downloading and using. So there is a very urgent need to collect this information. Uh, that will be important for the day-to-day -day planning um, in fighting COVID-19. But it will also be important in the longer term. What we don't know yet is whether COVID-19 will come back again, perhaps later this year or in 2021, um, and there will be other phases to this epidemic. So what we learn now will help govern the strategy today, but also in the future to fight COVID-19.